the entrance antiphon. Behold, the Lord will come, descending with splendour, to visit his people with peace, and he will bestow on them eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today in our Advent journey, we're joined by another saint, Pope Saint Damasus I. He was Pope in the second half of the fourth century, a time of peace in the church. All those persecutions had ended with the Emperor Constantine. And Damasus was able to continue to bind the church up as one family. There are two things that perhaps Damasus is particularly remembered for. He presided over something called the Council of Rome in the year 382. And the Council of Rome actually established the books of the Bible as we have them today. You may know there are lots of different works that aren't included in the Bible. And it was Damasus' council that actually fixed the scriptures as we have them in our Bibles to this day. The other thing that Damasus is remembered for was his devotion to those earlier martyrs of those persecutions in Rome. He embellished their churches, he wrote poems, he was a bit of a poet, he wrote poems in Latin which he actually had inscribed in a beautiful calligraphy over the places where those martyrs were buried by fostering that devotion to those martyrs of the early church which is still part of our life today. So, even though Damasus comes from a long time ago, there are things in our church today that still come from him. The shape of the Bible and that devotion to those early martyrs. Reasons for us to give thanks to God for what he did on this, his feast day. It's also an invitation for us to continue to pray for the church, for those Christians who are still persecuted throughout the world today, and for our own Holy Father, the successor of St. Peter and of Pope Damasus, Pope Francis, that he may continue to guide and unify the church in this age. We're on a journey of Advent, prepare to meet the Lord Jesus. Let's begin our Mass, as always, by thinking of our own lives with honesty, asking for God's forgiveness as we confess our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us and make us holy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may constantly exalt the merits of your martyrs, whom Pope St. Damasus so venerated and loved. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I, the Lord, your God, teach you what is good for you. I lead you in the way you must go. If only you had been alert to my commandments, your happiness would be like a river, your integrity like the waves of, a sea, of the sea. Your children would have been numbered like the sand your descendants as many as its grains. Never would your name have been cut off or blotted out before me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Anyone who follows you, O Lord, will have the light of life. Anyone who, who follows, follows you, O Lord, will, will have the light of life. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor lingers in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of scorners, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, 
and who ponders his law day and night. Anyone who follows you, O Lord, will have the light of life. He is like a tree that is planted beside the flowing waters, that yields its fruit in due season, and whose leaves shall never fade, and all that he does shall prosper. Anyone who follows you, O Lord, will have the light of life. Not so the wicked, not so, for they are like winnowed chaff, shall, shall be driven away by the wind. For the Lord guards the way of the just, but the way of the wicked leads to doom. Anyone who follows you, O Lord, will have the light of life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus spoke to the crowds. What description can I find for this generation? It's like children shouting to each other as they sit in the marketplace. We played the pipes for you and you wouldn't dance. We sang dirges and you wouldn't be mourners. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he is possessed. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom has been proved right by her actions. The Gospel of the Lord. In this period of Advent, our scriptures every day focus somehow on John the Baptist. So today we have the Lord Jesus referring to John, saying that when he came out there in the wilderness, living in his camel skin suit and his diet of locusts and wild honey, people say he is possessed. One of the things about John the Baptist was his incredible integrity. That word integrity cropped up in the first reading today as well. A reading which was all about how when God speaks his word, our job is to listen. God is not interested in populism. We think perhaps that's a modern phenomenon. You know how politicians and people try and find not necessarily the right thing to say, but the thing that people want to hear. In a sense, I think that's behind the gospel today, as Jesus complains that John's message and his, while coming from the same place, though they were in different forms, they didn't please the people. They weren't what people wanted to hear. But that's where we go back to that first reading, where God states so clearly, I'll show you the way. You've got to listen to what I say. God isn't going to tell us what we want to hear. God is going to tell us the truth. And what we've got to do is look for an integrity that can accept God's message and do our best to follow it and help others to follow it as well. Not simply to be trying to please people, but speaking that word of truth. What's this got to do with Advent? Well, remember Advent is that season where we're invited to prepare to meet Jesus. What better preparation for meeting the Lord of truth can there be than to practice integrity? to open our own minds and hearts to what Jesus speaks to us in the scriptures, the word of God that we receive, and to let that guide us in our own daily lives. In these days of Advent, therefore, let's think about how we accept God's teaching. Do we sometimes pick and choose what we would like to follow? Do we pick and choose what we might agree with or believe from the scriptures, from the church's teaching, from the word of God? Or are we willing to say, I will believe, I will trust, I will follow where Jesus leads. Let's just think and perhaps have a pray about that now. Praying also, as I said at the beginning of Mass, for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for all who lead and guide and teach in the church, that they may be filled with integrity. We think of these and our own prayers and intentions, and we place them on the altar with the gifts of bread and wine I now prepare.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept this sacrifice from your people, we pray, O Lord, and make what is offered for your glory in honour of Pope St. Damasus a means to our eternal salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, so that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. 
At the Saviour's command and formed by his divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Though we don't exchange a sign of peace, we do pause for a moment to pray for peace, peace in our world, in our society, in our families, with our friends and our enemies. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the sacrament we receive, O Lord our God, stir up in us that fire of charity with which St. Damasus burnt ardently as he gave himself unceasingly for your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us take Christ to the world. Thanks be to God.